Yeah, I want to go over this uh, saltwater powered car that just came out. New technology, uh, getting the airwaves here, so to speak. Um, but um, I don't want to knock the technology or anything, but I'm going to actually tell you there's a little caveat to the technology. Basically, it's a type of battery storage system that gets cut right to the chase. Uh, the car has been, it's its really cool though. I mean, it's a, it's a fast car. It's really slick looking. You can see what it looks like here. This is the unveiling. Um, so it's called the Quaint E Super uh, Sport Limousine Concept Car. You get, I think it's how it's pronounced, it's uh, H-U-G-U-E-T. Um, and it claimed that it could only run on salt water, right? And it really looks very futuristic. It's got the equivalent of like 900-something horsepower. It's about as fast as a McLaren uh, or something. It's ridiculously quick. Um, but it actually does not exactly run on salt water per se. Uh, it's a four-door. It's a four, I mean, a four-seater. Uh, it's got the gold wing doors and all that type of stuff. It's really slick. But um, what goes on with this car, the technology is really a major improvement in battery technology. That's what's really going on. Uh, the batteries are still... In other words, the electricity has to come from someplace originally. It's not producing its own electricity. So it's like an a liquid electrolyte circulate through two separate cells in which a, like a cold burning takes place, just like a normal battery. But you still have to have a charging station to charge up and the water, the salt water. But the thing is, there's not going to be any emissions on it. So it's really, you still need a, a, a charging station, but the charging station could be... Uh, electrolyzed water electro a type of in other words the electrical electrolyzed water that has to be fill up the car and then you can go for several hundred miles it's a very quick car it's got a, an electric motor on for each wheel and in other words uh, so when a nano flow battery is running low you just replace the electrolyte fluid to recharge the bot the battery in about the same time as it would take to fill a tank with gas. So in other words, you're filling up liquid water, seawater, or not seawater, salt water, that it has an electric charge to it to it. So that's that's your battery. And then it flows through a membrane on demand into supercapacitors to run the electric engine so it will go a uh, long distance though it's uh, 250 to 375 miles and uh, the tanks are 200 liters each two tanks two tanks of water but it's a very interesting approach because the big drawback to electric vehicles was how how do you recharge them quickly enough and you know one of the things was super capacitors now Hemp was another thing they were looking at with fibers. With hemp, which could be uh, bring down the cost of supercapacitors. Now this car does use supercapacitors, but the main battery is a type of saltwater battery. So uh, it doesn't exactly run on saltwater per se. So that's not really the fuel. In other words, the energy has to come from someplace. It needs a charging station. But the thing is, the charging station could be, um, in other words, it could be a saltwater electrolyte charging station that fills up the car just as quick as uh, gasoline. But there's no emissions, but still the electricity has to come from somewhere, it has to be produced somehow. But then you start thinking about this, the, it, this may be a method that could store electricity besides... In other words, electrolyte water that has to fill up these cars, maybe electrolyte uh, storage facility. In other words, that makes this, that makes the, it stores the electricity where that's going to fill these cars, could come from solar panels. So, I mean, you know, some people are kind of like knocking the technology a little bit because it doesn't, you know, in other words, when they market it, they make it almost sound like the car is running off of salt water forever. 
and ever and ever and ever. But no, no, it doesn't quite work that way. Actually, I guess this illustration here pretty much tells you exactly how it's working. There's a, there's a cathode and an anode, just like in a battery. And after a while, that becomes depleted. And But the thing is, the material that is being used, instead of saying like, you know, you have a lead acid battery in a regular car, start car starting battery it's using a type it's using salt water salt water as an electrolyte and you still have to charge up that that salt water has to be recharged after a period of time and that is where you have a filling station but still that's like a super major um you know move in the right direction it's no matter how you put it so you know it's a great concept and and it's also probably going to be some great technology that could store electricity from solar panels because you know that's one of the big problems you know how do you store electricity from solar panels because batteries are dirty messy you know they deplete there's all those problems so maybe that's you know in other words that could be the way maybe uh, electricity stored from solar panels in salt water and then it's used in vehicles or used in enter, uh, motors or whatever the hell it is to drive factories or whatever the hell it is and uh it's a it's a super duper concept actually no matter how you put it so and uh you know this car is considered a top of the line uh concept sports car with the gold wing gores uh it goes it's faster than anything out there i think it's got the equivalent of about 900 horsepower or something it's it's ridiculously fast. It's probably about as fast as a McLaren, you know, the, the best of the best. And, uh, you know, it, but the thing is, you know, if your people are driving this car uh, as a regular vehicle that most people would use, it would probably have one quarter that horsepower would probably be more than adequate. And uh, it would still, it would probably increase the range, I would imagine, too. But the thing is, the technology is a major, major, major step in the right direction. It just doesn't exactly run on salt water, I guess, the way... And I'm not saying that the person that developed it is, is claiming this. I'm just saying that the way it's being hyped by others secondhand are saying it's running on salt water. And now, that is a lot different because, you know, like a lot of people before... Uh, when they said a car was running on water, they were splitting hydrogen from the water. But there was an energy process to split the hydrogen from the water. But this is something totally different. It's actually using salt water as an electrolyte in a battery. And that's a battery storage system. So, but the concept is fantastic. And, uh, you know, that's the one big drawback to electric vehicles. How do you fill them up fast enough? How do you charge them fast enough? So the way to charge them is you charge. You already have the pre-charged water and a replaced electrolyte at a filling station about as fast as you fill up a car and away you go for a few hundred miles or so and uh, maybe even longer if it doesn't have as much horsepower as this, this concept car. So it's major, 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 major step in the right direction and uh, it it's... Uh, it is it is pollution free as far as the car goes, and if you can get the electricity from the first place and store it in the first place from solar panels, well, in that case, it's a hundred percent of carbon free electricity. You know, it's not going to produce any kinds of emissions. So, and the technology is here and now, but. I don't know how it's being tested in Europe, so it's going to go into it's being tested in production in Europe. They're testing it on uh, European roads and all this, so it, it's going to happen. It's not going to happen worldwide overnight, but I think 10 15 years from now, maybe you're going to be seeing a hell of a lot more electric cars. Probably, maybe most cars will be electric 10 for 15 years from now, just due to this type of technology because. This has actually revolutionized the way the batteries work. And it's made it feasible to uh, store vast amounts of electricity. And, you know, the one problem, I guess, was the batteries. And also, the fire hazard of the batteries, too. So, it's in other words, move over Tesla. <laughs> and I guess it's a blow to Tesla, too. Because best Tesla uses the lithium-ion batteries. 
And, you know, you saw one thing that happened if, you know, those, the batteries in cars today in a hybrids, if I guess they're fairly safe. But if they ever caught on fire, it's worse than gasoline. But in the case of these saltwater cells, I, I'd imagine they're very, very safe compared to other types of batteries. So, anyway, it's, uh, it's definitely, definitely a move in the right direction. But the car does not really run on salt water. And I guess, you know, not the inventor isn't saying this, but I guess the people that are, you know, hyping his invention after second hand are kind of twisting his words around a little bit. And what's going on is it's a salt water battery. So as the water, as the battery depletes, which is over a 300 mile range, um, 250 to 375 miles is what they're projecting. That's a very good range, actually.